So you've run the first line urine test and one of the drug lines is missing for uh, THC. Uh, so that's a fail or a non-negative result for that drug. So we now need to take the urine and send this off to the laboratory so that they can run a chain of custody uh, drug analysis. So um, the, I'm just going to put the, uh, pop the urine into one side for a moment. I want to talk about the components of the chain of custody test kit. So inside the little bag here, um, we get um, the following components. We get a uh, postage paid envelope uh, that goes off to the laboratory with a sampling. Um, we get a, a transport bag. Just get this stuff out. Um, so this is a transport bag and this is in two parts. So the back part of the bag is where the form is going to go and the front part is where the vase of urine are going to go. So you're going to want to get put that to one side for a minute. Two transport pots uh, and inside each of the transport pots uh, is a little vial where we're going to uh, put the urine. So I'll just take them out for a minute. And we have a little collection cup. Um, so. Um, First of all, I want to explain the chain of custody test consent form. So at the top of the form, um, you'll see a row of barcodes and underneath that some details that you already find filled out. So customer ID code, customer telephone number, customer postcode and customer name. So all those details will already be filled in because that's the reseller's uh, company's details. So that's us. Um, and for you, uh, what you need to fill out at the top there is site location. So site location will be your company name and where you're located. Uh, underneath that, the reason for tests, so pre-employment, post-incident, random, follow-up, for cause, scheduled. So whatever reason it is that you've run the test in the first place, you'll need to put that in there. If you have another reason, you just simply put that in the little box uh, underneath. Then underneath that, collector's name, and then donor's name, donor's date of birth, their sex, male or female, collection time, uh, collection date, sentinel number if you work on the railways and you need to put that in there, otherwise national insurance number. Then we've got a donor declaration for medication and bearing in mind that you would have already filled out a consent form when you've done the first line drug test. So the medication details you can simply uh, transfer onto this form. Um, Underneath uh, that, there's a little couple of little boxes. One says, I am not taken and have not taken medication the last 14 days, in which case they tick the box there. Or, I am taking medication, but I don't want to declare it. And if that's the case, and they refuse to declare what it is, they simply tick the box there. Whatever happens there, though, they have to, anybody has to sign the uh, donor signature for uh, medical declaration. Underneath that, um, in this, we're talking, uh, doing a urine temperature check, so um, you would have already done that. You would have checked the temp temperature of the urine when you took the first line test. So you just put a little tin in the box to say it's between 32 and 38 degrees. Underneath that, in the please write test required here box, this is where you're going to tell the laboratory what you want them to test for. So our employees fail the drug test for THC or cannabis, so you're simply going to write THC or cannabis in there. And then at the end of that box, a oral fluid or urine, so you'll tick the urine box there. Underneath that, the donor or employee has to read the donor consent to test statement, sign it and date it. You then sign and date the next box on the right there, which is your, uh, which is a collecting officer declaration. And then underneath that, the employee has to sign or uh, initial and date both of what we call the tamper of evidence seals, one mark A and one mark B, and they'll become clearer as we now go through the rest of the test. So we fill out the form. Um, at this point, I generally give this to my co-assessor and ask them to make sure that they think I've filled the form out correctly. Should have uh, three signatures and two initials, so uh, you should have a signature by the employee, donor declaration for medication. They should sign the consent to test. You should sign it as a declaration uh, as the collecting officer and there should be signatures or initials on the two tab of evidence seals. So, uh, we have the urine. Um, we need to put the urine into these two little vials here. But if I just simply take the lid off here and try and pour these into the two little vials, this doesn't have a pour and it doesn't pour very well. So what I uh, like to do is pour some of the urine into the little cup here. That should be plenty. 
Um, and then from here, we take each little bit. You'll notice I'm doing this over a piece of kitchen roll or tissue, uh, just in case there's any spillage. Uh, do these one at a time. So put the urine in and put the lid on. Um, and then we repeat the process with the other um, vial. As long as they're around half full, that'll be fine. Uh, we've now finished with the urine and uh, we're gonna get rid of that in, in, in a little while. Please bear in mind that uh, we have people's urine DNA here, so you can't just throw these into bin. So uh, once we got rid of the urine, these will, will need to go into clinical waste uh, along with the cup here. So we then come back to the form. Now we've got the urine in the two little vials and we head straight to the chamber of the seals at the bottom of the form, one marked A and one marked B. These do tend to stick to the gloves, so you have to be a little bit careful with these. So we simply take them one at a time, peel the chamber of the seal over the top and down the side. So that one now is marked uh, B and this one is A. It's really important when you do these to make sure that these aren't torn or ripped. Sometimes, as you'll see here, the little red part of the label uh, tears off. That's absolutely fine. Um, but what we don't want is any tears above the little red part. So anywhere uh, up and over and around the top, there can't be any tears or rips in these. And if there are, when the laboratory get hold of them, they won't be able to run uh, the test because chain of custody has been broken. So we now have, um, one marked A, one marked B, so we simply carefully put these into the two little uh, transport pots, ensuring that we don't damage the tablet and the seals as they go in. We then come to the top of the form and we take a couple of the barcodes. Um, so we just place a barcode around each of the two pots there. You only need two of these barcodes. You can send the form back with the other two on. Uh, you don't really uh, need to do anything else with the two barcodes. So we have the urine in the vials with the tamper of ever seals on, with the barcodes on the outer uh, transport pots. So we now put that into the front part of the transit bag. Um, so they go in the front part. Take the form, it's, uh, it's in four parts. So the top part is the uh, laboratory copy. So once again, do just a double check to make sure you've told the laboratory what you want them to test for and that all the signatures are in the right place. Then fold that up and we place that into the back part of the transit bag. So um, the urine and the form are now in separate parts of the bag, just in case there's any leakage in the post. Take the seal off the top of the um, envelope there and seal that down. That then goes into the first class uh, prepaid postage bag. And we're going to send it off to the laboratory. So we take the little seal off the top there and we seal that down. That's now ready to go off to the laboratory. The pink copy is the employee's copy um, and they may tell you that they want to get uh, uh, their own sample tested. Uh, so we give that to them and if they do want to get their own sample tested they simply contact the laboratory at the details given at the bottom of the form contact them and they'll go through the procedures of how that works it normally costs employees between 80 and 120 pounds so i generally tell them that but that's their problem if they want to get uh, a sample tested the rest of the form uh, we have a blue part to the form uh, and a green part the blue part is a collector's copy and the green part is the employee's co uh, employer's copy. Unless there's a real reason, I don't see why these would be separated, uh, so I would keep them together. And I would normally staple our initial donor consent form, the one we filled out when we done the first line drug test, to that and we keep that in one place. And that's how to conduct a chain of custody sample for urine and send it off to a laboratory.